Okay, Cal Gang, we're back with the next example here. Um, so back to related rates. So here we have a hot air balloon and it's rising straight up from a field and it's being watched by somebody that's 500 feet away and then they're giving you some information about a specific moment in time. So let's first figure out what the movie looks like. So you have somebody standing out in the field and there's a balloon Okay, there's a balloon, you have somebody standing, and they're watching, they're watching over time the balloon lift off the ground. Okay? That's the movie. This thing is going up off Oh, that looked about the same distance there. Okay, so maybe a little higher on that guy. But you get the idea. It's going up. It's going up into the air. Okay. So you have to sort of ask yourself. This one's more sophisticated. There's a lot more um stuff going on so I'm gonna break this down more for you okay so the big thing you have to keep in your mind is what is changing with time and what is fixed what is changing with time and what is fixed so if I just do like a general picture here But just do a general picture here, you've got to ask yourself what is changing with time and what's fixed. So one of the things that we're looking at when we analyze this problem is the height of the balloon. And would you say the height of, of the balloon is fixed or it changes with time? Good. So hopefully you notice it's, it's increasing, it's getting higher with time, right? The height of it is changing. So that means that this side's a variable. Okay, the balloon is not hovering, it's not staying fixed in space, so it's, it's a variable. The other thing that they're looking at when they do this problem is how far this person is standing from the balloon. So you want to figure out, is that fixed or is that changing with time? So what do you think? It's fixed. Good. Right. The guy isn't running back and forth looking at the balloon. He's not doing the cha-cha. Right. He's, he's just standing there going, wow, look at that balloon go up. Right. So that guy's fixed. And if it's fixed, you do not put a variable. If it's fixed, you do not put a variable. Okay. So how far away is this guy standing? He's standing 500 feet away. So he's always going to be standing 500 feet away. Okay. Don't put a variable in for him. Put the exact value. The other thing they're talking about is he's watching the balloon go up, right? So they're talking about the angle is increasing. So he's watching, he's watching the balloon go up. He's watching the balloon go up. So they're talking, so he's technically, his eyeball is technically here, okay? Like his, his, we're gonna, I know that looks weird, but he's technically there, okay? So his eyeball is watching the balloon go up. So the other thing they're talking about then is this angle here. So would we say that this angle is fixed or is it changing with time? Is it fixed or is it changing with time? Right, it's changing with time, right? Because at, over time, this angle is actually getting larger. Okay, so this is what we would call the general picture. It's looking at a specific scenario and deciding with time who's changing and who's fixed. And do not include more things than they're talking about. That will make this very confusing very fast. So those are the three items that are being discussed. The angle, the height, and how far the guy is standing away from the balloon. All right, real important. Real important you hear what I'm about to say. The equation that you choose is based off of the general picture. 
the equation that you choose is based off of the general picture, not this, what is going to be called the specific picture, the general. All right, so, so I've got to notice what I have. I have, some, I have an angle, so this has got to be trig. This has got to be trig. I have an angle, I have an opposite side, and I have an adjacent side. I have an angle, an opposite side, and an adjacent side. So this has got to be a trig function I need to use. Can you think of what trig function that might be? Okay, hopefully you said tangent. So the tangent of theta is equal to h over 500. The tangent of theta is equal to h over 500. I'm just going to write this a little differently because I'm afraid some people might take the derivative wrong in this form. So i just going to, not that you have to write it differently, but I just wanted to help people. So I'm going to write the tangent of theta equals 1 over 500 times h, just to make sure the derivative gets done correctly. Okay, so the derivative goes off of the general equation, right? This guy here is the general. And this is what we take the derivative off of. All right, now the derivative, remember that you have to do it in respect to time. You got to do it in respect to time. All right, so derivative, this is chain rule. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. So derivative of tangent is secant squared. Derivative of theta in related rates, because theta is a function of time, right? Theta is a function of time, so is the height. The height's a function of time. You have to use a chain rule, so that means it's going to be d theta dt, because it's a function of time. All right, now over here you just have one variable with a multiplier, so it's 1 over 500 times the derivative of h, which is dh dt. All right, so that's the derivative. Now, let's go back and hunt now for more information, like what are we looking for and what things are given, stuff like that. Because that's as far as we can go now with the general. All right, so now let's go hunting for what other kind of stuff we have. At the moment, this person watching the balloon is at pi over 4. The angle's at pi over 4 the moment that the moment in time that he sort of wants to analyze. Like if you take like a snapshot, like if you take a picture, it's a movie, but you want to freeze frame it for one moment. At the moment you freeze frame it, the elevation angle is pi over 4, and the angle is increasing at a rate of uh, 0.4 radians per minute. How fast is the balloon rising at that moment? So at the second that you freeze frame it, what you know is that the angle, now that's the rate of the angle, so make sure you write that correctly. It's the rate of the angle, d theta dt is 0 0.14 radians per minute when the angle is pi over 4. So this is what we know, this is a known, this is a known. The unknown, or what we don't know, the unknown, is how fast is the balloon rising. So how fast is the balloon rising? What do you think we're looking for there? What, what derivative are we looking for there? How fast? That's a rate. Whenever, whenever they say fast or speed or something like that, that's a rate. So we're looking for dh dt at that moment. We're looking for dh dt at that moment. That's the question. Okay, so now we did the general picture, so now we want to look at like the specific picture. The specific picture is what's happening at the moment you're freeze framing or taking a, a, like a photograph, okay? So at the moment that we're freeze framing the action here, what do we know is, is happening? Do we know the height of this guy? Do they tell us the height? No, they don't tell us the height. Uh, do they tell us the angle? Yes, they tell us the angle. It's zero point, no. The angle is pi over 4. It tells us the angle is pi over 4. We still know this guy is standing 500 feet away. Okay, so even though they don't tell us what H is, we can figure it out, right? Because this is 
If it's pi over 4, the two legs have to be equivalent because it's an isosceles triangle. So you can figure out what the uh, H is. So then H has to be 500. Uh, if you want to, if you want to put it here, you can do that. And again, I only know that because this is pi over four, else I wouldn't have known that. And what else do we have here? Okay, and we're looking for dHdt. All right, so that's the specific picture at the snapshot. So let's just go back over here for a second, because let's isolate what we're looking for. We want to solve for dHdt, so I want to isolate that. So I'm going to isolate. Let me just make this a little neater. I'm going to isolate what I'm looking for. So I want to isolate dHdt because that's what I want. So I'm just going to move this 500 to the other side. I'm just going to multiply this up over the other side. Okay, there we go. It's up on the other side. So I've isolated what I'm looking for. And now since I have my specific picture, that I'm analyzing, I know what's happening at that moment, I can go ahead and plug in. Okay, so let me see how I can do this to best help you. Okay, so maybe here. So now I can figure this out. So dHdt, so now I'm going to plug in. So dHdt is equal to 500. Now there's two ways to solve this. For me, I just like to do secant squared of pi over 4. And d theta dt, they gave that to us at 0 0.14. So for me, uh, you could use the, the triangle here, but I just, I like doing pi over 4 itself. You know, that's the 1, 1 radical 2 triangle. I just like doing it off of the standard triangle. So dh dt is equal to 500. dh dt is equal to 500. Oh, oh boy. All right, let's just give that a go again. <laughs> Delete that. Okay, dHdt. Got to love holding the camera trying to write. dHdt is equal to. So, secant of pi over 4 is going to be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So, that's going to be radical 2 over 1. That's the secant of pi over 4, but then I have to square it, and then I have to multiply it by this. Okay, so it's going to be dHdt. It's equal to 500. If you're going to square the radical 2, that's just going to make a 2. All right, so this is going to end up being 1,000 in the front times this. So we just got to move the decimal place three places, 1, 2, 3. So dHdt is going to equal to 1, 4, 0. Now, you just got to get your units right. So let's see what the units would be. H, we can look back at other things to figure out what the height is. So... Um, they said that this was in feet, so that means that h has got to be in feet. And then time, the radian was in minutes, so that means that we're also in minutes. The movie's going at the same speed. All right, so it's 140 feet per minute. All right, so just to say that one more time, I know these have gotten uh, complicated. So when you do these, first try to figure out what the movie is, right? Figure out what the movie is doing. Then find an equation that describes what the general movie is, is doing. Anything that's changing with time is a variable, right? So you figure out an equation that describes your general picture. You take the derivative of the general. Figure out what you're looking for and isolate that. So for us, we were looking for dHdt, so I isolated that. Then figure out what your specific snapshot is. Like, what's true just in the moment, right? This guy isn't always pi over 4. It's just pi over 4 in the moment. This guy isn't always 500 feet. It's just 500 feet in the moment. I didn't even use that the way I solved it. But you could have if you solved it differently. And then you just plug in that specific data into what you've isolated here. And then you crunch it out and you stick your units on it when you're done. We'll do more of these. If you're feeling overwhelmed, we'll do more. Just try to, uh, try to keep learning like a new piece each time we go. Okay, catch you soon. Bye.